to our fifth night of this evangelistic series, Hope Still Lives. My name is Sunil Vesicerón. It's been an amazing four nights that we've had talking about this message that is so powerful and impacting for all of our lives. What do you say, Andy? What an amazing time we have been having all week in the Lord. God has been with us and given us the hope that we need to make it through. So indeed, we are very happy to be with you all tonight to welcome you to this great cataclysmic momentous event where God is just pouring night after night his hope uh, through words by the speakers that have been coming to us. So yes, indeed, Sunni, it has been marvelous. It's been wonderful just to be here night after night. And then what do we want to do, Sunni? Well, we want to tell people that we want you to share. We yes. want you to share. You cannot stay with hope on your own. We want you to share with everyone else. When you have good news, you want to tell the world, right? When you're having a baby, when you're having something happening in your life, you call somebody right away. Well, this is a moment to share. If you're on Facebook at this moment, we want you to share. Hit that share button Go and right share now. it with other people so that they can also receive that hope. And if you're on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you share that link with other people so that they can receive the message as well. We're on Facebook and Greater NY Conference and on YouTube, Atlantic Union Adventist Media. It is amazing to know that we can continue to share that good news of our Father. Uh, we want to let you know that you can do that right now. You can go on YouTube. You can go on Facebook. And of course, you can go on AUM. You can make sure that indeed that we are sharing this good news that there is hope, that hope still lives. So we want to let you know tonight, of course, that you can share that news. And then, yes, we have wonderful things happening. And we want you to stay focused. We want you to stay ready. And we want you to join with us. But more than that, we want to tell you that hope still lives. It still lives in a greater New York territory where we are all about touching hearts and changing lives. And mm -hmm. even in the beautiful island of Bermuda, where this program is being broadcast also, we want to greet you at this time and welcome you afresh and anew. We have someone uh, that is coming uh, at this time, uh, Sister Yvonne Knight. Sister Yvonne Knight is the prayer ministry uh, coordinator at the Atlantic Union Conference, and she's about to bring us our opening prayer. Sister Knight, we're coming to you now. Thank you so much, Pastor Lagridel. My brothers and sisters, my friends, greetings. As a First Lady of the Atlantic Union, I find it a privilege to participate in this significant outreach. As Prayer and Women's Ministries Director for this union, it is encouraging to witness the enthusiasm with which God's word is being presented. Earlier today, we met on the Atlantic Union Pearl Line. We were encouraged to rejoice in hope. This is only possible because hope still lives. Let us pray. Our Father, what a privilege we have, knowing that you orchestrated this moment. You arranged it so that we all could be here. We all could be participating in one way or the other. And we thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your blessings. And when we think about the future, we can only be strong because you have given us hope. So as each speaker presents something about hope, something about trusting in you, may our hearts be open. And as our speaker tonight, will present that significant message about hope that we have in you. I pray that your blessings will flow on us. May it not just be limited to us here, but there are those who are out in social media world, those who are watching on YouTube, Facebook, AUAM TV, whatever the medium, whatever the platform, I just ask God that you will bless. I also ask a very special blessing for those who are probably searching, searching for something, searching to find love, searching to find hope. May they tonight, may they be enlightened and realize that true hope can only be found in Jesus Christ. So I ask that you will now bless us and bless us in such a way 
that when this meeting would have been finished, we will be rejoicing and looking forward to tomorrow night when we'll invite others to come and praise you with us. God, thank you. Thank you for the hope that you have given us in your son in whose name we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. amen. Each evening, we have a greeting from our leaders, and tonight we have a greeting from our Vice President of Hispanic Ministries of the Atlantic Union, Pastor Dioniso Olivo. Tenemos ahora una bienvenida por nuestro Pastor Dioniso Olivo, que es el Vicepresidente de los Ministerios Hispano. Pastor Olivo. Good evening. It is real satisfaction for me to be here. Um, part of this program in which hope is being reminded, still live. Suppose many people are connected, looking for hope, waiting for hope, because this is the place really where we can remember that hope still lives. Now, hope comes um, in different, you know, ideas and, and people have uh, figures re to remind us about hope colors hope has a color also but now uh, within people speaking about hope i found some some statement from miss uh, moem she says the following hope hope is the place where you want to go hope is the person who you want to know hope is the feeling that carries you through and hope is the future for me and you. Beautiful. Now, the originator of hope is our Savior, Jesus Christ. And he reminds us that he fills a life of hope. In the book of Jeremiah in the Bible, chapter 29, verse 11, this is what it says. For I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are in the wagon. We are in the car. We are walking in the fact that hope still lives, comes from God, thanking him because in him we have hope. We have to say, I mean, we, we feel very happy to see all of you connected and be part of this, of this program. Please enjoy as you listen, as you see about hope still live. Yes, indeed, we wanna thank Dr. Olivo for his greetings and his very kind words, his special words about hope. And at this time, we are going to have a special feature. We have someone uh, extraordinary that is going to be sharing with us. We have our superintendent of education of the Greater New York Conference, Sister Marlene Romero. She is going to share with us something you ought to get excited about. Yes, Sister Marlene, come to us. Good evening. I've enjoyed this series so very much. And if there's any place where you can see the theme of this series lived out day by day, minute by minute, is in the nine schools of the Greater New York Conference of Seventh-day Adventists that are located as far north as Orange County and as far south as Kings County and serve to educate nearly 800 students from pre-K through grade 12. It is here where you find hope, faith, and love beaming in the hearts and minds and faces of our students, teachers, principals, parents, and families. This year celebrates over 100 years of Christian Adventist education in this great region. And as you can imagine, Given the current circumstances, it has been one of the most challenging on record. But instead of despair, our school family has grown in faith 
and we've experienced an outpouring of blessings from God, whether in person or virtually, our principals, teachers, and staff have worked tirelessly to give students an excellent, safe, loving Christ-centered education. We thank the administration of the Greater New York Conference and the Atlantic Union for their support during this time. Our parents for their faith in continuing to provide an Adventist education for their young people. Our students for their perseverance and resilience to learn in difficult times. Our principals and teachers for de their dedication and commitment to Adventist education mission to make disciples and instill the image and character of God in their students. Lastly, to the many church members and contributors of funds and time to the Greater New York Conference Adventist Education, we thank you. You will hear from Mr. Patterson from Greater New York Academy, who will provide a glimpse into education at the Academy during this time. After him, we will see a video presentation for, by one of our students as she shares what Adventist education means to her. If you have any questions, or if you wish to send your child to one of our schools, or if you wish to make a donation to invest in the education of our students, I encourage you to reach out to me. God bless you, and we thank God that hope very much lives in Adventist education in Greater New York. Checked in. Please adjust your Wellington, and I am going into fifth grade. I've been at Whispering Pines mostly my entire life since pre-K, and Whispering Pines is the only school I've ever been to. I love Whispering Pines for many different reasons, but a few of my favorite reasons are that I've made friends at Whispering Pines. I have learned two other languages like Spanish and Korean, and I have teachers I know love me. I love Whispering Pines, but I also love Christian education for one particular reason because we learn one extra subject than any other non-religious school in the entire universe. You might be thinking, one extra subject? Well, some people don't really like school. So you might be thinking, one extra subject? Ugh, I don't really like that. 
but you get to learn about Bible. You get to learn about God. You get to learn about how he created you and me. You get to learn about his disciples, how he died just for us, how he died on the cross just for us, and how they nailed him to a cross because they didn't believe that he was the chosen one. And I love Whispering Pines and Christian education for a few of those reasons that I've just said. But even though Whispering Pines is a small school, it is a loving school. And I'm right here at Whispering Pines right now, just to film this. Yay! <laughs>
through Jesus Christ. We are really happy and we are privileged to have Pastor Cortez with us tonight as he's going to present the theme, the topic of tonight. Please keep connected so you can be blessed by the preaching, presentation, and the words of the Lord brought by Pastor Jose Cortez Jr.
And that is my prayer tonight, that God will draw you and me close to him, especially in this difficult time in which we are, we are living. And I want to say, as uh, I get going, that whenever I get an invitation to come to Greater New York, uh, I always say yes. Um, the only thing that I regret this time is that uh, I am not able to be with you in person. So now I would love to see those of you who are in the in the chat, uh, whether you are on Facebook or, or YouTube, uh, I would love to see uh, where you're watching us from. I know we have people in Queens. I know we have people in Brooklyn. I know we have people in the Bronx. We have people in Manhattan. Uh, I know we have people uh, in Staten Island. That's right. I know that you're watching us from Staten Island. I know that you are, some of you are in Long Island. I know some others are in, in upstate near New York, and, I, and I, I would love to see where you guys are watching from. So, uh, my goodness, yeah, I see uh, uh, Joan Cordes, I see uh, Waldina, I see Simon, Pastor Simon Pandy, I see Tania Mangun, she's watching from Long Island, I see Danielle Quayley. It is so good to be able to see each and every one of you here uh, tonight. Uh, this is awesome. So, just let me know, just let me know, Pastor Wayne, uh, Jamel, oh my goodness, this is in Carmel, New York. Just let me know where you're watching from, from and please tonight receive a, a virtual hug from me and from my family. You see, the, the one thing that I regret about this time is that I'm not able to be with you in person. I love New York, and, and you guys know that by now. Uh, the, the magnificent skyline, the, the Brooklyn Bridge, the, the World Trade Center, that's the, the new building that, that uh, was erected not long ago to replace the towers, the, the Empire State Building, and Yankee Stadium. Uh, of course, you know, uh, if I mention the Yankee Stadium, I, I cannot forget about my brothers and sisters in Queens. So, uh, of course, City Field, the Mets, uh, of course, I, I love the coastline of Long Island and the breathtaking nature, nature all the way upstate. But but let me let me make it very very clear. Uh, let me make it very clear. What is most beautiful about Greater New York? What, what, what I love most about Greater New York, what, what is best about Greater New York, what God loves most about Greater New York and about New York is is not the skyline. It's not the, the buildings. It's not, not the stadiums or, or the coastline or, or, or the nature. What is most beautiful about Greater New York and what God loves most about Greater New York is you. That's right. Ah, that is what is most beautiful. What I love most about Greater New York and what God loves most about Greater New York is you and your family and your friends and your co-workers. And I want to tell you tonight that it is not a coincidence that you are there, that you are in this big city, in, in this place that has suffered so much, but yet still continues to offer so much to, to our nation and to our division and to the world. God God has placed you there so you can reach your friends and your co-workers and your family with the hope that still lives in you. And I want to say it again. If God has placed you in the midst of such an awesome city, listen up, listen up. If God has placed you in the midst of such an awesome city, it is because... It is because he knows that you can take hope to the people all around you. So right now... Right now, uh, as we get ready to open our Bibles and to see what God has for us tonight, I want to I want to I want to pray uh, and I want to ask God. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to be with you and with me tonight. And I want to ask God to to impress in the minds of all of those of you who are watching that as we study our Bibles tonight and as we study as the hope that we can find in love, in the love of God, that he will inspire you and that he will inspire me to be loving Christians. Let's pray. Dear Holy Spirit, I thank you so much for your presence in my life. And I thank you for your presence in the lives of each and every one of those who are watching tonight, uh, all the way in the greater New York area. I know that we have people watching in other places. I know that we have people watching uh, all the way in Bermuda as well. So I want you to bless each and every one who is watching tonight. Let this moment be a moment in which we're able to recognize your love for us and in which we're able to recognize that we must love others like you love us. 
And let this meditation tonight, this time together, be a blessing, not only for me, but for everyone who is here tonight. Thank you for listening to our prayer. Thank you for your presence in our place. In the name of Jesus, amen. In a time of pandemic, people are still getting sick. Some are dying. And I know that some of you have had a close call with the virus. I know that some of you have been sick and have been in the hospital. I know that you know people who have passed away and perhaps some of your family members, friends, colleagues are missing today because of, because of the virus. In a time when the economy seems to be faltering, people are losing their jobs, families are going hungry. In a time of racial unrest, in a time of political uncertainty and division, God has a message for you, New York. Whether you are in the Bronx or in Queens or in Staten Island or in Brooklyn, in Queens, whether you are in Long Island or in upstate New York, God has a message for you, New York. And if you're watching from other places, God has a message for you as well. And the message that I want to share to you for, with you tonight is twofold. Number one, are you ready? Listen up. Very important. As I was praying and asking God to give me something uh, for tonight, God gave me this message. And I want your attention because it is very, very important that you understand this. Are you ready? Number one, New York. My dear brother, my dear sister, number one, here it comes. God loves you. Ha! Ah, God loves you. And that is the very first thing that I want to share with you tonight. God loves you. And I know that by now some of you are asking the question, did Pastor Jose just come here to this evangelistic meeting, to this special uh, programming? Did he just come here to tell me that God loves me? And my answer is yes, I did. Ha! Ah, the reason I'm here tonight is because I want you to know, I want you to be very sure, I want you to not ever forget the fact that God loves you. Do you believe it? I know that you've heard it before. But do you believe it tonight? If you're watching this with someone and someone is next to you, please, I want you to turn the per person that is ne next to you. And I want you to tell that person that is next to you, God loves me. Come on, do it. But if you're watching this alone, I want you to put it on the chat. Can you please go to the chat and put, God loves me. I want to see it on the chat. God loves me. Because this is the fact written on the Bible. The fact given to us every single day and every single night that we are not alone, that we love, we serve a God, and we live on this earth under the wash of a God who loves you and who loves me. So I want to hear you. I want to hear you on that chat. Can you please say it? God loves me. Do you believe it? God loves me. He loves me. And he loves you. Write it on that chat. You see, we serve a God that knows your life. He loves you despite the fact that he knows your life. We serve a God who knows my struggles. He knows that I struggle every day of my life. And I want to be very clear tonight. I am a church leader. I am someone who preaches on a regular basis. I am someone who talks constantly about God's love. And I still struggle. And please don't look at me as if you're perfect because you know that you struggle too. And we serve a God tonight who knows my struggles. He knows your struggles. And yet still he loves me. Still, he loves you. Can someone say amen? He knows the thoughts in your head. And he still loves you. He knows what you did last night and still loves you. That is the type of God that we serve. A God that despite the fact that he knows you and me inside and out, he still loves you. 
He loves me. And tonight, I want to say it. I want to say it very clearly. My life without God, your life without God is like a house without a roof. Ha! Uh, let, me, let me keep going. Let me keep going because I want to give you a sense of what, what this is all about. My life and your life uh, without the, the love of God it's like a, like a house without a roof. It's, it's like, a, like a car without wheels. It's, it's kind of like Times Square without people. Ha <laughs> ha, that's right. It is like a meal without Aki and saltfish. Come on, someone say amen. And perhaps, you know, for my Dominican brothers and sisters, it's like breakfast without mango and queso frito. But, but my life without God, let, let's say it's like, it's like basketball without Jordan and Kobe and LeBron and, and next time I will mention someone from the Knicks and uh, from the from the, but we need to pray for them you see my life without God's love is like baseball without the Yankees ha ah! We need the love of God in our lives. And the reason I'm here tonight is because I want to remind you if you knew. And I want to tell you if you didn't know that regardless of where you are right now in your walk, regardless of where you are right now in your journey, regardless of where you are right now in your life, God loves you. Amen. Is it clear? Pastor, And how do you know that? Let me tell you. One of my favorite Bible verses is found in the letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians living in the biggest city of his time. The New York of that time, it was a city of Rome. So the Apostle Paul was thinking, and what can I say to my brothers and sisters in Rome? And, and right there in his letter, Romans 5, 8, chapter 8, verse 8, he said the following to the brothers and sisters in Rome. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know something? Jesus did not wait for you to have it all together to die for you. My brother, my dear sister, Jesus did not wait for you to be perfect to die for you. My dear friend, Jesus did not wait for you to have your life all together, to have your life totally right to die for you. As a matter of fact, the reason why he died for you is because he loves you and he knew that you could not do it on your own, that you needed external help, and he knew that he wasn't the only one who could help. So that is the reason why he died for you. So when you are going through difficult times in your life, when you feel that you're not living up to expectations, when you think that you're not reaching the standards, when you think that you're not where you thought you ought to be by now, these are times when God still loves you and he loves you very much. I would love to say he loves you like crazy. So if I have someone who is watching tonight, you, my dear brother, my dear sister, and you haven't made a decision for Jesus yet, tonight is a night to make that decision for a God who loves you very much. For a God who loves you in the most difficult moments of your life. For a God who loves you, who loves you, even though he knows you, he wants you to accept him as your Lord and as your Savior. So uh, throughout the night, you will see a, a phone number that will be put on the chat. Uh, you will see a, a phone number that will be placed on the screen and that you will be able to text us. You will be able to, to let us know that you will accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I want you to know this. Jesus cannot wait for you to make that decision to accept 
as Lord and Savior. So if you haven't been baptized, if you haven't accepted him yet, tonight is the night to accept that Jesus, that Savior, that Lord that, that loves you so much that despite the fact that you're not living a perfect life right now, and I want to make it clear, none of us is living a perfect life, that despite the fact that we're not doing uh, our best right now, he's willing to love you, he's willing to accept you, and he's willing he's to help you. Amen? You see, uh, this is the best and, and major present truth of the Bible. Uh, and let me let me say this. And for some reason, uh, this uh, has become the kept secret of Christianity. And at times, I as if it is also a best kept secret in Adventism, the fact that 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 Jesus and loves us and that God died for us even when we were yet sinners. And that is the reason why tonight, before uh, I would speak uh, about the Sabbath, before I would speak about the second coming, before I would talk about the health message, before I would talk about anything else that has characterized us as, as Adventists and that has characterized our faith, uh, I, I had to be clear with you, there is nothing more important. There is nothing that is greater. There is nothing that is big. There is nothing that is deeper. There is nothing that is wider than the love that God has for you and for me. And I want to say this. Without his love, there is nothing. Without the, there will be no creation. Without his love, there will be no cross. Without his love, there will be no resurrection. Without his love, there will be no sanctuary. Without his love, there will be no second coming. Without his love, there will be no health message. Without his love, there will be no commandments. Without his love, uh, there wouldn't be a church. Without his love, there could be no hope. Without his love, there is nothing. And that is the reason why I want to make it so clear tonight. God loves you, my brother, my sister. God loves you. And perhaps some of you could say, Pastor, but yeah, when we talk about the love of God, that is like, that is like milk. That is like soft food for, for babies. And I want to tell you one thing tonight. I am not a baby. I am 48 years old. At times with this pandemic, I feel like, like I'm 49 or 50. But, but last time I checked, I, I am 48. I am not a baby. And any time that someone tells me, God loves you, I get this feeling all over. I get this warm feeling in my heart because this is the most awesome fact of the Bible. And this is the most important belief of my life. And it still produces the greatest feeling in my heart. I am a sinner. I am messed up. Yet God loves me. <sighs> Every time that I read in my Bible, Another one of my five favorite verses. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Every time that I read or that I hear someone say that, I receive life. So I want to make it clear tonight. It is only because of his love for you and for me, that hope can still live tonight. Amen. Amen. But I want to say one thing right now. We don't want to keep this hope to ourselves. We don't want to keep this love to ourselves. The first thing is that God loves me and that he loves you. But now, tonight, I want to share something else. I hope that by now you're clear that, that his love for you is unfailing, that he loves you regardless, that he is with you, uh, and that he wants to save you no matter what. But now, I want to, I want to call you to something else. God does not want you to keep his love. He wants you to pass it on. 
Can you put that on the chat? God does not want you to keep his love. He wants you to pass it on. So can you put that on the chat right now? He wants you to pass it on. He wants you to pass it on. He does not want you to keep that love for you. He wants you to pass it on. And let me share something uh, that happened to me a, a few months ago. Perhaps some of you have heard the story. If you have heard the story, please don't say anything. A few months ago, before the pandemic, Um, hit. I remember finding myself in LAX, uh, Los Angeles at the airport, ready for a red-eye flight. You know what red-eye flights are like. If you don't know, let me explain. Uh, you take a flight at 11 p.m. midnight in Los Angeles, and you travel all night And you arrive in the East Coast at 5.30, 6 a.m. And the reason why they call them red-eye flight is because when you arrive, your eyes are red. Ah, that's it. Very simple. Uh, I, I've done this many times. I try to fly at night so I can spend the day, uh, next day with my family. I, I, I've done a lot of traveling. Um, during this pandemic, I've been able to be home uh, and spend a little bit more time with the family. But usually that's what happens. So I, I usually prepare myself for these trips and I have a, a pillow that I use. I have something to cover my eyes. I have uh, uh, headphones that cancel noise, outside noise. So I don't hear much. Uh, I like to sleep during those red eye flights. During the day I talk, uh, during the night flights, I like to sleep. I like to recover my energy. Uh, so I'm able to spend a good day with my family on the following day. So they called me and I went into the plane and I realized that my the person that was sitting next to me was already there. She was uh, uh, almost uh, asleep already. I kind of had to ask for permission to get through to my window seat. I sat down. Uh, she uh, did not even say hello or anything. I looked for my headphones. I said, Pro, it's going to be a good night. She's not going to be very talkative. That's great. I put on my headphones. Uh, and I realized that my headphones were not working. The battery was gone. So I looked for the, uh, for, for the connection to, in order to charge a battery. Uh, I went uh, right underneath my seat. I noticed that there was a plug, to, uh, electric plug to, to charge my battery. So I tried to charge the batteries, but I realized that the, 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 the outlet was not working. By now the plane is, is taking off And the lady right next to me begins to make some noises. Ah, if you know what I'm talking about. Those of you who have been to Pathfinder Camperies, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, when you have to sleep in a tent with uh, five, six other uh, uh, staff members or five, six other Pathfinders, and one of them likes to snore. Ah, this lady began to snore. Uh, and the snore was not just a small, uh, uh, soft snore. She was, she was doing it with gusto. She was snoring with a passion. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I, I tried to, to see uh, what I could do, but my headphones were not working. And, and soon I realized that it was going to be a, a very difficult night. I remember my dad when I was a little kid and we talked about people who snore and how to help him out. My dad told me to just go like <laughs> and do that. And, and that would make the person wake up. And, and so I did that. And, 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 and she went <laughs> like that for a moment, but then she continued snoring. So almost the whole night, <laughs> almost the whole night, I had to listen to the snores of the lady that was sitting next to me. And finally, uh, around 5.30, uh, the pilot says, we're beginning our, 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 our approach to the Washington Ronald Reagan Airport, and we'll be landing in a few minutes. And I said, hallelujah, uh, I'm, I'm done, I'm almost home. I won't have to hear the lady anymore. And as soon as the pilot said that, The lady woke up, she looked at me without saying hello or anything, and she said, uh, what do you do? She was asking uh, pretty much, what do I do for a living? What, 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 what type of work do you do? What do you do? And I said to her, I am a minister. Uh, and right away she asked, what denomination? Uh, and I said, Seventh-day Adventist. 
And the lady looked at me and she said, and she said, oh, I know you guys. You guys are the ones that don't eat meat. You're all vegetarian. Ah. I looked at her and I tried to explain that, that some of us are uh, vegetarian. And uh, I am, with, the, with uh, and I must be honest with you, with the exception of when I eat New York pizza. When I go to New York, uh, I, I have to have the New York pizza. But other than that, I am, you know, uh, I explained to her that there are some Adventists who are not. Uh, I explained to her that it is not a requirement to join the church. Uh, even though we enjoy being healthy, uh, I tried to explain to her that we were known for other things. I talked to her about our hospital health system. Awesome. We have a great system of health, uh, beautiful hospitals all across North America. Uh, I talked to her about the blue zones and, and, and people who live 10, year longer, uh, 10 years longer than, than the rest of uh, the Americans. Uh, I don't know if you knew that, but Adventists, we Adventists live 10 years longer than the rest of, our, um, of, of the people in, in, in the United States. I, I talked to her about Adventist community services. Uh, I even threw uh, in the name of Ben Carson, uh, but that did not go over very well. She said to me, have you heard what he did recently? And by the tone in her voice and the look in her eyes, I could tell that she was not a Republican. Uh, so I kind of walked away from that conversation quickly. I said, okay, uh, let's, let's talk about other things that we have as Adventists. We tried to talk for a while. Uh, we tried to talk for a while. But as the plane stopped at the gate and they announced that we were free to go, uh, as she was getting ready to deplane, to leave the plane, she looked at me and she said, well, you may have a lot of other things going, But the first thing that comes to my mind whenever I hear the word Adventist is they are vegetarian. And then she walked away. I tried to follow her to see if I could convince her that, that, that we had, that there was more to us than just the, being vegetarian. Uh, but she walked away quickly uh, and I didn't see her again. And now I have a question for you, my dear friend, my dear brother, my dear sister. When people in your city, in your neighborhood, when people in your school, when people in the workplace, in your business, when they hear the word Adventist, what is the first thing that comes to their mind? I have a neighbor. His name is Daryl. The other day I was with my family walking our dogs in our street. And Daryl He said to me, you Adventists, you are some awesome people. You're awesome people. Uh, I just cannot join you because I could never be a vegetarian. That's, so that's my neighbor telling me that. And you know, this has stayed in my head. Since that red eye flight from LAX to Washington, D.C., then the conversation with my neighbor Uh, I have kept thinking about this and I have come to some conclusions, my brothers and my sisters. I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to be a part of a church that is only known for our diets. I want to, I want to make it clear and please don't stone me yet. I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to be a part of a church that is only known for our hospitals. I don't, I don't want to be a Christian. I don't want to be a part of a church that is only known because we live longer lives. I've, I've been thinking about this and I want to be very clear. Please don't throw any rocks at me yet. Have some patience and some love with me right now. I, I don't want to be a, a Christian. I don't want to be a part of a church that is only known because of, of Ben Carson and, and not even because of LNG White. Ah. I, I, I have come to the conclusion in my life. Uh, that I want to be a Christian and I want to belong to, to a church that is known for what really does matter. I, I want to, to be a Christian. I want to belong to a church that is known for what Jesus wants 
wants me and you and our church to be known for. And now you're asking me, and what is that? There's another Bible verse. I love this one as well. It's written in red in my Bible. It's written in red in your Bible. And you know what it means when it is written in red? It means that Jesus said it. You got it? Jesus said it. John 13, 34 and 35. And it says there, a new commandment I give to you. That you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. And by this, listen up, by this, all men and women will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one for another. Ha! You see, Jesus in his infinite, in his infinite wisdom, he could have said, and if they see you going to church every Sabbath, they will know that you are my disciples. And I love going to church Sabbath. Going to church on Sabbath is awesome. Jesus could have said that, but he didn't. Jesus could have said, if they see you praying, praying at all times, and I love praying. That is the way in which I'm able to communicate with God. I love praying. Jesus could have said, if they see you praying all of the time, they will know that you're my disciples. We ought to pray. Jesus uh, uh, loves that we pray, but yet he did not say that. He said, if they see that you have love for others, they will know that you are my disciples. Can someone say amen? So God does not only love you like crazy, but now he wants, he's asking you to love others, to love others as well, that they may know that we are his disciples. Can someone say amen? You see, the best way to show your love for God and your faithfulness for God is by loving others. The best way to show that you are a disciple of Jesus is by loving others. Uh, the distinct characteristic of a disciple of Jesus is, is not the Sabbath, is not the dress, is not the diet. It's not the taste of music. It's, it's your love for others. Can someone say amen? I didn't say this. Jesus said it. As a matter of fact, not only the disciples of Jesus, but also the redeemed. When Jesus comes in the clouds of glory, uh, there will be people there waiting for him. And there will be two groups. And there will be a group to the, to the right. And, and, and Jesus will uh, say to that group, for, for I was sick and you visited me. I was, I was thirsty and you gave me water. I, I, was, I was naked and you clothed me. And the people will say to Jesus, when did we do this? And Jesus will reply, for as much as you did it for the least of this, you did it for me. So listen up, we will not be saved by what we do, but in the day of the second coming, we will be recognized by the love that we had for others. Can someone say amen? Uh, but if you don't believe me, let me go a little deeper. First John 4, 8 says that God distinctive, God's distinctive characteristic is love. And there it says, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So there you have it. Disciples are known by the love that they have for others. The redeemed will recognize on the day of the second coming by the love that they showed others. And the Bible says, that the distinctive characteristic of God is love. As I get ready to close in here, I want to say this. If people don't see us as a community of love, they will not accept us. They will never accept us as a community of faith. And in closing, let me say this. My dear brother, my dear sister, don't just love the ones who look like you. 
Don't just love the ones that, that smell like you. Don't just love the ones that dress like you. Don't just love the ones that talk like you talk. Jesus came to save those that, that look different than you do, those that dress different than you dress, those who eat different than you eat, those that, that smell different than you smell, those who dress different than you dress. Jesus came to save them too, and he wants to save them through you. As, as followers of Jesus, we only have the right to reject the sinners, the groups of sinners that Jesus rejected. Which group was that? Ah, that's right. Jesus did not reject any groups of sinners. Jesus came to seek and to save those who were lost. And if we are his church, and if we are his people, and if we are his followers, and if we are his disciples, we are called to go and love and seek and help to save those who are lost. Can someone say amen? If we cannot love the guy with the tattoos, if we cannot love the, the, the one, the, the gentleman who smells like, like he's been smoking, if we cannot love the teen who is pregnant out of wedlock, if we cannot love the, the woman who has been trafficked and sold as a prostitute, if we cannot love the man who is uh, struggling with his sexuality. And by now, some of you are looking at me funny. Please don't look at me that funny. Because uh, uh, all of us who are watching right here tonight, we have all struggled with our sexuality in one way or another throughout our lives. If we can, we cannot love the, the those who are not vegetarian. If we if we cannot love the, the woman that comes to church dressed with pants, uh, my question is: Who are we going to love? What are we here for? If we are the church. Of Jesus. If we are the recipients of God's love and mercy on a regular basis, we ought to be the givers of God's love and God's mercy on a regular basis. And let me close with this. The song, you will not be able to find that in your hymnal. It's not in your hymnal. It's a, it's a popular song, but I think that it has a beautiful message. It says what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It is the only thing that there is uh, just too little of. What the world needs now is, is love, uh, sweet love, and not just for some, but, but for everyone. Uh, uh, Lord, it says uh, we, we do not need uh, uh, another mountain to climb. There are plenty of mountains at, and hillsides enough uh, to, to climb. And, and there are oceans and rivers enough to cross, uh, uh, enough to last to, to the end of time. In reality, what the world needs now is love, sweet love, the sweet love of Jesus. Am I making myself clear tonight? So as I close... I want to ask two things. Uh, I know that there are many of you who have already given your lives to Jesus. Uh, many of you who are already part of the family of the church uh, that is a church that is filled with love. And I want to ask you tonight, would you make a commitment? Would you make a commitment with Jesus? And say, my God, I want to be someone who loves people. I want to be someone who loves people. I want to be a disciple who loves people, even if they are different. I want to be a disciple who loves people, even if they don't dress like I dress. I want to be a disciple that loves people, even, even if, if, if they are doing what is wrong. I want to still love them because I want, I want to be able to show the love of Jesus to them. If you want to do that tonight, uh, I, I invite you to write it on that chat. Whether you are on YouTube or Facebook, please write it down. I want to love people. As a matter of fact, don't say, I want to love people. Say, I will love people. I will love people. Can, can, can you put that down on your chat? I will love people. I want to see it. 
Put it down on that chat. If, if God is talking to you tonight, if the Holy Spirit is talking to you tonight through, through my words, I want to see, I want to see you made that commitment tonight. A commitment to love people. I will love people. And I'm seeing some people writing it down on the chats right now in YouTube, also on Facebook. I will love people. When we love people, we become the eyes, the heart, the hands, and the feet of Jesus, wherever we are. So Marlene, this is awesome. Ricardo, this is beautiful. Marisol, so good to hear from you. I will love people. Ari, I will love people. I see people saying that. Edgardo Morales is saying, me and my family love people. All right, all right, very good. Tania, I will love others. All right, that's awesome. Sharon Holness, I will love people. Nelly, I see that. I see that. Danielle, that's awesome. Please, just, just write that down. If that, is, if that is your desire tonight, just write it down with the help of God. I will love people. Adrian, that's awesome. My brother, Adrian Case, I will love people. Uh, Ter Teresa Brown, uh, I will love people. I see that. Lorian Gonzalez. Uh, Lorian, are you watching all the way in Bermuda? Uh, it's so good to, to, to see you here. I will love people. I love that. We need a church of followers of Jesus who loves people. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God for your commitment and for your, your desire to love people tonight. Natalie, it's so good to see you. I will love people. Daniel, I will love people. Pastor Bartholomew, I will love people. I love that. That is a church that God needs on this earth in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of racial unrest, in the midst of, uh, of economic uncertainty, in the, midst of, in the midst of political awkwardness. God needs a church on this earth. God needs a church in the capital of the world. God needs a church in Bermuda. God needs a, ch a church everywhere in this world that will love people. That will be the eyes, the heart, the hands, and the feet of Jesus wherever we are. Amen. I praise God for your commitment tonight. But now I know that there are some of you who are making decisions and who have been getting ready to be baptized. There are some of you who are watching tonight who are not part of God's family on this earth yet. And you've been to church and you've watched all of these programs and, and you've seen pastors preach and, and you study your Bible and, and you just want to make a decision for Jesus. And you, you haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. And you want to be baptized. And you want to be a part of this family of love and this family of compassion. A church that loves people where, where they are. And tonight, I want, to, I want to ask you, would you like to make that decision tonight? It is the best decision that you could make in your entire life. To give your life to a God who loves you. To a God who loves you and is willing to help you. And to become a part of a church family that is willing to stand by your side as we all struggle together to love you, to embrace you, and to be a part of your journey and the journey of your family. So if you want to accept Jesus tonight, you haven't been baptized yet, and you would like to be baptized, I know that we're going to have, we have a, a text right there on the screen. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, there is a number 516-916-5754. Uh, we have pastors who are waiting because uh, they want to, make sure that as soon as the pandemic allows, they, they are able to, to, to make that desire, your desire to be baptized, they want to make that desire come true. So if you, if you want to make a commitment for Jesus tonight and be baptized, please text us. Uh, if you have a special prayer request, we want you to text us as well. But right now I'm talking to those who are trying to make a commitment to, to follow Jesus and be baptized. The Bible says that he who believes and is baptized will be saved. And Jesus is offering you this opportunity tonight. Tonight could be the most awesome night of your life. So right there where you are... Uh, it is okay to...
take your phone and text. If you're going to wait for a few moments uh, because you want to finish watching this, just take a screenshot so you don't lose that phone number, but we want to make sure that you, that, that you are able to respond to this invitation. Uh, by the way, if, if you're not able to, to reply to the text, just put it on the chat, say, I want to be baptized. I accept Jesus. I want to be baptized. And one of our pastors, one of our brothers and sisters will be in touch with you. If you're a child and you're watching tonight, uh, talk to your dad and to your mom and tell them, I want to be baptized. And, and, and they're going to talk to, to the pastor and they will make sure that you're able to make that commitment to accept Jesus in a public way at some point in the, in the, in the days to come and become a part of the family of love and compassion that is our church. If you're a teenager and you haven't made that decision, this, this appeal right now is for you. God is talking to you right now through his servant. And, and he's asking you, he's inviting you to join him. To join him in this journey of life. Life with a God who loves you like crazy and wants to walk beside you. If you're an adult and you haven't made that decision yet, perhaps your wife has been in church for a long time and you haven't uh, been there and you see how she, she goes to church and, and at times you wish that you could do that. Today is the day. Tonight is the night to make that decision, to join your family, to join your wife and to become a part, a part of God's family on this earth. If you're an elderly person and you haven't made this decision yet, this invitation is for you as well. And I'm taking my time. I am taking my time because I know that you're there and you're trying to make that commitment with Jesus. And at times it could be hard. Don't wait for perfection to do it. And, and perhaps, you know, some of you are saying, Pastor, you do not believe in perfection. I cannot wait for the day in which I'm perfect. But the Bible is very clear. The Bible says that he who began the great work in you will continue to work in you and will complete his work in you in the day of his coming. So the day, in the day of the second coming, I know that God will transform me and he will also transform you. But in the meantime, the Holy Spirit, our God, is with you to help you as you walk in your journey through this life. So don't wait for perfection to accept Jesus. If you keep waiting for perfection to accept Jesus, you will never be able to do it. Jesus died while we were still sinners. That's the reason why we need to be baptized is because we're sinners. So don't let the fact, the fact that you don't feel that you're living up to all of the standards keep you from making that decision for Jesus. Tonight is the night and this invitation is for you. So please text us. Or simply just write it on the chat, I want to be baptized. And we have pastors and brothers and sisters who are, who are uh, attending uh, the chat and they will be in touch with you. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray for you. Uh, you have made a decision to be a Christian who will love others. I also want to pray for you. You have made a decision that you want to be baptized and you want to be a part of God's family on this earth at church. I want to pray that those decisions that you have taken tonight will be decisions that will live on and that with the grace of God, the grace of God, those decisions will, uh, you'll be able to leave the decisions that you have made tonight. Let's pray together. Dear Holy Spirit, I thank you for your presence with us tonight. Dear Jesus, I thank you for loving us so much that you died for us even as we were the worst of sinners. Uh, thank you for loving us in such a way that we know that perhaps even though we go through difficult times in our lives, you're walking alongside each and every one of us. Thank you for being with us in a very special way tonight. And now we want to ask that we might be able to love others, that others might see you, Jesus, they might see Jesus in us. That we might be able to be your eyes and your heart and your hands and your feet wherever we go. And that others will know that we're not alone as they see how much we love them, even, even when they are different. I also want to pray for those who have not made a decision for, for you yet, Jesus. And I want to pray for them tonight. There are some who are making that decision right now. I pray that you'll be with them. 
I pray that they'll be able to, to, to uh, realize and to fulfill their dream to be baptized and to become a part of God's family on this earth very soon, Lord. Be with them. Affirm that decision that they're making tonight. And thank you so much for our time together tonight. I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 What a beautiful and powerful message. We love people. I love that wherever you go, Pastor Cortez, you talk about love and, of course, compassion. That's such a great ministry. And Pastor Cortez, Greater New York loves you too. It's such a privilege to have you with us. And we hope that we can get together sometime soon. But it's great to hear your voice and hear you with us. Amen. God has used you in a much powerful way. We want to give God glory, honor, and praise because not only we heard that good news, but we felt the power. We felt that love oozing out from you. Tonight, we want to remind you again that hope still lives and that hope that we are talking about is the love of God, is the love of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But we want to remind you also, uh, those that need prayer, those that are Need, that are in need of Bible study, those that have made decision, we are here and we know that God is pouring out his love in a very special way tonight. And all that we can do is to respond to that love. So Sunni, why don't you tell us a little bit what is happening right. furthermore uh, tonight? Of course, the night is not over yet. We do have Afterglow coming up. So we want to hear from Pastor Jamal, who's going to talk to us a bit about that. Perhaps while you are listening to the sermon, a question came to mind. Or maybe you have a thought you would like to share with somebody else. Well, you could do that tonight in the Afterglow. That's right, Jose Cortez is going to be joining us and you can share your thoughts with him. We're going to be having a dialogue and discussion with each other. So join us by going to nyhealinghope.org, clicking the Zoom link button so you can come and see us at the Afterglow. So don't forget to join us on the Afterglow right after this. Please, the number is right here. Please use that number, and it's a Zoom ID 935-5854-2172, password Afterglow. So we want to know what's coming up tomorrow. Do you know, Andy? Well, we are excited because tomorrow night is going to be another night of hope, and tomorrow night... We are going to have the executive secretary of the Atlantic Union Conference, uh, Dr. Pierre Omler. He's going to be talking to us about hope of eternal life. You don't want to miss this. It's going to be live in our studios in Greater New York Conference where hearts are being touched and lives are being transformed. So make sure you tune in for tomorrow night. But once again, we want to remind you tonight, if the love have come through to you, through the word of God, we want you to, of course, to request prayer. We want you to request uh, Bible studies. And if you want to go all the way in the love of God, we want you to request baptism. Pastors are standing by. Uh, uh, lay people are standing by. And we want to be there to help you in that decision. Once again, that number is 516-916-5754 for your prayer request, for your Bible study request, and also for baptism. We love you. We love you so much. And we thank God that you join us tonight. And I know, Suni, you want to share just a little bit more, just to tell the people that were watching how much yes. we care, how much you love them, and so much more how much God loves them. Yes, we want to continue this message of hope each night. We still have a couple of nights to go. So we want you to join us again here tomorrow at 730 Eastern Standard Time. All of you, invite someone. Invite someone at this moment to join you tomorrow. So we want to see you again tomorrow at 730. And yes, God loves you and we love you. Have a wonderful evening. God bless you.